I had just graduated from university, and little did I know, I had also just quit Esri. Even though this is the tool that I had learned every GIS and geospatial skill up to this point, I had just used it for the final time. I was left in the desert with no way to work with geospatial data. But this was really a gift in disguise, and while it wasn't always easy, it was well worth it in the end. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the steps that I used to get there and why you might want to do so as well. Have you ever heard about French chef Auguste Escoffier? Back in the 19th century, French kitchens were strictly run, but also incredibly complex and chaotic. Escoffier saw this complexity and did something radical. He simplified the process, focused on enhancing natural flavors, and reorganized kitchens into brigade systems, where each chef had a specific role. Just as Escoffier broke away from the heavy and rigid traditions of French cooking, moving into a more modern GIS or open source interface can allow us to break some of the constraints of a proprietary geospatial system. In short, when we simplify our tools, tailor them to our needs, we get to innovate on our own terms. Now, the path to get there wasn't always easy, and for me, there were three different phases that it took to ultimately reach that point. So let's talk about these three phases and how you can put those into practice for yourself. But I do want to address one thing that I get in the comments of these videos all the time, is why don't I like Esri? And if you watched any of my videos before, you notice I don't talk about it, and the answer to that is actually quite simple. And if you have read some comments before, you'll know the answer to this, is that I just stopped using it. Now, just like many of you, I learned on Esri and those different tools during my course of my education, but these weren't the tools that I ended up using as I went into the professional field. And the one major reason for that is that when I left college, I no longer had access to those tools. Once I left, I did not want to buy a license to continue using those different tools, but I did also want to continue to do geospatial and GIS in my spare time. This left me with effectively very limited choices, but I was lucky to exit school at a time when a new tool had just sort of arrived on the marketplace, and that made me very, very lucky. I was lucky enough to leave school at a time when QGIS was just starting to really take off and be available in a widely used format. So fortunately, I made that switch pretty early on and was able to use that going forward. Once I discovered this, a big question rose into my mind. I did learn open source tools and things like that during the course of my education, but why wasn't I being taught some of these other options and understanding of that ecosystem? That's always something that stuck in my mind through this entire process. And that led me into my first phase of discovery. This was entering the new world phase. I had discovered this new amazing tool, QGIS, and a few different things around it, but it wasn't always easy to use. And there's a few key reasons for that. To put this in context, the time here is around 2010 and 2011, and QGIS and the ecosystem to support it was much different than what it was today. For example, this is the website that you had to download QGIS from. I believe this is a blog, actually, that someone graciously hosted their web hosting on. You can still download it from there today, but a much different experience from the robust documentation and support and other resources you can actually use to learn something like QGIS. So not only was downloading it difficult, there were different crashes and issues and bugs and many different things that made this not quite an easy process and transition. And effectively, while many of the tools that existed in QGIS were the same ones you could use in ArcGIS Pro, you effectively had to relearn this entire thing from the ground up with a lot less support than you had in your university setting. The good news in all of this is that you could actually replicate most of what you wanted to do from Esri and ArcGIS in QGIS. Yes, it was just left up to you to figure out how to actually do that. And that's the biggest takeaway from this new world phase, is there's a complete new set of tools that you're going to have to understand and integrate with and actually use. And this has changed a little bit. I know more of these tools have entered into the university domain, but overall, you're still gonna have to relearn, especially if you've been taught on a primarily Esri-based education. So what does this new world phase look like? I think there's two big takeaways. First, you need to take stock of what is out there. Understand what you want to do and the tools that you might want to use to support it. Basically, create a plan to figure out what you want to do. Second is find the appropriate resources that can help you learn that. I did not do that. I kind of went in heads first and figured it out as I went along. If I went back and did it again, I would create a clear plan of what I wanted to do and actually figure that out. Now, with that clear plan, you can actually enter into phase two a lot more prepared than I did. 
and that's that rewiring phase. If you think about this, this is the reorganization of the kitchen and basically reorganizing your thinking to match to these new toolkits that you actually want to use. So the first step is understanding all the things you used to do in an Esri ecosystem, both from a actual logistics and terminology and applying that to a new ecosystem that you're building out on your own. And of course, there's all these other tools that sit on top of that, everything from specific tools like PostGIS and GeoPandas and GDAL into specific languages like SQL, Python, R, and others. And figuring out where to start and what to learn and what order can probably be one of the most difficult steps here. Where should I place these things and what should be the important aspects that I need to focus on? I've addressed this in a few different videos. Here's one that's extremely popular, so I recommend checking that out if this is a step that you're stuck on right now. My biggest recommendations are to continue with that plan and understand what tools you need to use in what order. If you're looking at geospatial analytics, there's a specific set of tools you might want to focus on, things like Python and SQL. If you're focused on purely GIS applications, you might want to look at things like QGIS and other tools in that ecosystem. So figuring out where you want to play and what you want to do is probably the most important step here. But you also have to get comfortable with discomfort. You're learning on your own to a certain degree. You're going out and figuring these things out. There's no lesson plan. There's no clear path for you to do A, B, and C. That can be extremely difficult difficult, but get comfortable with that uncomfort and lean on different resources that exist out there for you. Now, the big bonus here is that you have entered into the phase of AI. You actually have something that knows everything or nearly everything and can actually give you some different steps to achieve this. You can write lesson plans, you can give it step by step, you can have it quiz you. So definitely lean on these new AI tools to help you do that as well. Now, once you've built this plan and you started to transfer your skills out of the Esri ecosystem and into this new landscape, now you can start to actually execute and build on these projects and you've entered this modern GIS phase. You've reorganized the kitchen, you know what you need to do, and you can be a lot more efficient. And this is probably the most rewarding phase. This has helped me in a lot of different ways. First, this has helped me to grow my career both professionally but also in a personal interest level. I really like solving these new problems and it's helped me come to work and always find a joy in what I'm doing. I love solving these problems. I love going and trying to figure them out and probably most importantly, I have a level of confidence having gone through those periods trying to figure these things out to actually go out and know that I can do them. Now, if you've ever had the feeling of imposter syndrome or thinking that you know how to do something, but maybe a little bit fuzzy on the steps to get there, going through this a few times will help you gain and boost that confidence. And more and more, you'll be able to say with confidence, I can tackle this problem. And I, with my new toolkit, I know exactly how I want to solve it. I'll tell you one thing that is an extremely fulfilling feeling and one that I hope that I can help you get to if that's the path you want to go down. And most importantly, I realized I wasn't being constrained by tools anymore. I was never having hitting a limit of how much data I could load in or can this analysis do this or what steps do I need to do here or is this going to crash or am I going to get some error that I don't know what to do with. I haven't hit that limit in a very long time and more and more as you add tools to your toolkit you'll figure out ways to solve these things and continually improve on the process to get there. Adding more tools, adding more scale, whatever it is you want to do you can find new ways to address that. Going back to the kitchen metaphor you have a new kitchen with specific stations focused on specific tasks. Once you've learned those tools and the specific tasks that you can do, you can figure out how far you can push them and which tool or which station is right for the job. If you want to make sauces, you need to go over here. If you want to cook, you need to go over here. If you want to bake, you need to go over here. In the simplest possible way, this freedom of choice is extremely fulfilling and rewarding. Put simply, it's the freedom of choice and exploration that gets me excited to do what I do every day. Learning from what Escoffier taught us, moving to modern GIS isn't just switching tools. It's adopting a philosophy that values flexibility, community, and innovation principles that chefs like Escoffier championed in their kitchens over a century ago. So these three steps, kind of entering into a new phase, figuring out how to organize it, and then actually using those tools that have helped me move out of Esri and actually opened up a whole new world of possibilities for me over the years. But there's actually a fourth step that made all of this really possible for me, and that actually took five years to learn that one single skill. It was incredibly tricky, but you can check that out in this video and learn actually how I did that and how it can help you as well.